Hey guys, Tool Cruz here and welcome to another bike commuting video. So this is a new series I want to start on this channel. I've been bike commuting a lot lately here in Japan and I recently made a video about my bike commute to work and in today's video we're going to be making a video about my bike back home. So today we're actually riding a different bike. This is my Planet X cyclocross bike and we've kind of got a mix of a road tire on here and cyclocross tires on here because I got a flat the other day. But anyway, let's get going on today's ride. So it's currently about 5.45 p.m. and the sun is starting to set. It's really nice this time of year in Japan because it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just kind of perfect. Uh, the wind is a little bit strong but I'm hoping we have a nice tailwind on the way back so we can get some nice audio on the ride. So this is the area where I work in Japan. Uh, we're at our first main intersection. Nothing too exciting here. Some yakiniku and a gas station. If you watched my last few commute videos, you'll notice that we've got a different mount set up here. So this is actually my new Wahoo Element Bolt computer, but we're using a different mount. So this one is actually originally a Garmin mount, but I got a new attachment that Wahoo sent over to me for me to use. And it stands out a little bit, but it's nice to have a dedicated mount for both the road bike and for the commuter bike. Over to the right here, we've got a small little Japanese park. Sometimes in the morning, there's some older people playing like croquet and stuff there. And stop sign here. Make sure you always stop. And my Wahoo lets me know when I'm stopped and when I'm not. So if I hear the sound, I'm safe. One of the things I like about the ride home, um, I made a video recently also about how my first, how my thoughts are with my first month bike commuting, uh, how it's been affecting me, like mentally, physically, and all that stuff. And one thing I gotta say, I really like the ride home more than I like the ride going to work, mainly because the day's over, I have no work really waiting for me, just go home, and I've got my lovely wife and some dinner waiting for me back home. So, especially on a day like today, really nice sunny day and chasing my shadow home. This is actually a train line here so some people asked if there was public transportation that I could take to go home. I also get some questions about e-bikes. What you just saw there is an e-bike. Actually most family bikes here in Japan are e-bikes especially family bikes like that where they have the kid rack in the front and back and stuff. Um, but as for the question of why don't I get an e-bike for my commute. The main reason is Japan has some strict regulations for how much assist you can get on the motor. So I think it's, it's less than like 20 kilometers an hour, at which point like I'm mostly commuting about like 30 during my commute for most of the time. So I wouldn't get really any assist in any of the parts. It wouldn't be worth it. The bike would just get heavier and I'd just be more tired. So that's why I don't use e-bikes. This is kind of a older style street here, super narrow. Gets really backed up with traffic in the morning. Old style building, old style street. This is one of the few inclines on my commute. Nothing too serious. After living in Japan the last few years, I started to adapt to some of the bigger climbs. Coming from a state, I'm from the US originally. Michigan, if you're familiar with it, has no mountains unless you live in the Upper Peninsula. So I was never a climber. I was always a sprinter, flats kind of guy. So when I first came here, I really suffered but now I've adapted to the climbs, turned into a little skinny guy, and now I'm a fairly decent climber. But unfortunately on my commute, there's not too many climbs. Here on the right, we got a dog park. Lots of people out, especially on days like today. Most of the dogs you see in Japan are really small, but 
At this park, you sometimes see some bigger guys. Lots of people out today. So I really love dogs. I'd love to get a dog of my own one day, but Japanese apartments are really strict about that stuff. Actually, in my current apartment, we're not allowed to have any pets or anything. And when I think about the maintenance that's required to have a pet, especially a dog, it's just, I barely have enough time to maintain myself in the life that I want to live. I don't know how I do it. So this park here, over to the left, this is called Shonai Ryokuchikoen, which is a really nice park. There's actually a cycling course in there. So I'll show that to you guys one day. Not today. We'll make a dedicated video for that. Maybe I'll make another commute vlog in there. So speaking of these commute vlogs, I'm thinking to make this a regular series on this channel because there's lots of topics I want to talk about. I have to commute to work every day and it'd be great if I can sort of mix the two. So while I'm riding, maybe take a different route every once in a while, show you guys something new and talk about something that I think is interesting. So it might be cycling related. It might be life in Japan related, but if there's any topics you'd like me to go over, any places you'd like me to ride by in the Nagoya area, that's where I live, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about this idea. Is it a good idea? See, so yeah, this park is massive. Right here we've got a cycling course, uh, but ironically, everyone uses it as a running course. And we've got some people playing field hockey, I think is the correct term. Field hockey, maybe. but we're gonna leave here pretty quick. We're hopping over to the river path. Here's the other short incline. The good thing about the nice days, or the good and bad thing about the nice days is you see lots of people out on the course, so I'm always happy to see more cyclists out. But the bad side, I guess, is if it's busier, you gotta be a little bit extra safe. So good. Looks like we're in the clear for the commute home. Nice tailwind, so we should be able to get some good audio. The other day I filmed a video and it was like a headwind the whole way. The audio just kind of got messed up. I'm amazed how well this mic performed in those conditions. So I'm expecting some good quality today. So here we are. So this is the same name, this river path, the Shonai River. And that's the same name as the park, Shonai Ryokuchikoen. So Shonai River and Shonai Park. So most main rivers in Japan will have usually some sort of dedicated cycling path or a path that you can use to go cycling along the rivers. Sometimes they're maintained really well, sometimes they're not. This one's kind of a mixed bag, like this short section is maintained fairly well, but you see there's a lot of bushes coming out onto the trail and sometimes there's some animals like turtles and there's a lot of flies, especially on the ride home. That's one thing I'm really disliking right now. In this section, there's a lot of these little flies that just sort of gather and swarm. And so if you don't have, I made the mistake earlier, a few weeks ago, I didn't wear my glasses and these guys would just go in my eyes and I couldn't get them out, it was horrible. And if you're talking like I am now, they're probably gonna be going in my mouth. Luckily, there don't seem to be too many out today, which is nice, but there's gonna be even more, I'd imagine, in the summer. I got some questions about how I deal with sweat while I commute and get to work. I'm really fortunate. If you don't know my job, I work in the cycling industry in Japan here. So I work for a cycling distribution company. Oh, I hate these guys. Those little birds, or those pigeons, they don't move. And sometimes they do at the very last second. So you don't know if you're gonna hit them. I can't read what they're gonna do. Those are my enemy number one right now. Um, but anyway, yeah, my, my job right now, I work for a cycling distribution company, mainly working with BMC here in Japan. And 
yeah, it's a nice free work environment in terms of the clothing that we get to wear. In my old job, when I was a university lecturer, I had to wear dress pants, dress shoes, dress shirt. And after riding to work, even though my ride was really short, I'd be sweating like crazy, even on the like not super hot days. It doesn't need to be that hot in Japan for you to sweat because the humidity is just insane. Um, but now with my new job, because I work mainly in a warehouse, I can wear shorts and a t-shirt. So even if I'm hot for my ride, I generally can cool off pretty quick just because I don't have to wear long pants and a long shirt. Uh, so yeah, I'm really liking the clothing work culture at my job. I think most Japanese companies aren't like this. If you work for like a regular company, they're going to have the strict dress codes, the suits, the salary men kind of stuff. But fortunately, my job doesn't have that. I just got a wave there. Wonder if that guy's a fan. Uh, that's another cool thing that's been increasing lately. I get a lot of people sort of stopping me when I'm riding, saying like, hey, I'm a fan of the channel. Or when I go to cycling events, I've actually got a event weekend coming up this weekend. It's the Mount Fuji hill climb, which I believe is the biggest or the most um, entrants like race in Japan, the most number of entrants. It's a huge race, hill climb series. Races are so big in Japan, like, um, but hill climb races are safe and like anyone can enter them. You just go up the mountain, even if you crash, it's not going to be anything too bad. And it's something that you can like really work towards. And I was originally planning to enter that race because with my job, sometimes we get like free entries to the events that we're setting up a booth at. So I was planning to enter with the company entrance. So I didn't register personally, which is a big mistake because one of the, the other people at my company, I guess we're sharing the booth with another company and they decided to give the entrance to the other company. And I didn't know about that because no one told me. So in the end, I wasn't able to enter the race. And so I'm super bummed because I've been training a lot lately, especially with my commute, doing extra intervals after the commute. I'm in some of the best fitness I've been in in years and climbing really well, getting some KOMs on Strava. And I was really looking forward to it, really like challenging myself, doing the Fuji ride. I've never done it before. I've hiked the mountain a couple times, but haven't ridden there yet. So it's always kind of bittersweet going to a cycling event and not being able to participate. It's great if you can go and cheer people on. Uh, but so the event is actually two days. On Sunday is the race itself. And Saturday is kind of like an exhibition sale, like garage sale kind of thing. And all these different people will be setting up booths, selling different products. So that's what I'll be doing, working there. And we're actually leaving that Saturday night. So it's really unfortunate because even if I can't race the race, I'd like to at least watch the race, but we're not sticking around to do that. So the job, there's some great things, some great perks in the job working in the cycling industry, but there's also some sort of negative points that I'm learning along the way. Um, being a cyclist myself, I have my like priorities as a cyclist. I want to race, I want to challenge myself, but there's also the priority of being an employee, focusing on the company and those kinds of things. So there's really no sense for us to stay and watch the race from a company perspective. But from an individual perspective, I'd love to go and film a YouTube video. So who knows, maybe I'll like camp out somewhere and ride my bike back. I doubt it. So we're off the river path here and we got to get on this narrow road here. This is one of the more dangerous sections. The speed limit here is supposed to be like 40 kilometers an hour and I'm going like 30 right now, but there'll be cars that blow right by me. It's really dangerous, especially because it's not really wide enough for cars to go both directions. Yeah, I don't like that at all. But fortunately, this section's not very long. We're gonna turn right here, 
cross over to this bridge. This bridge is pedestrian only. And there's a nice beautiful view of the sunset over here. Can you guys see this? So this is a great way to finish work. Beautiful view, especially on these sunny days. Gorgeous. And over here, on a clear day you can see the mountains in the distance, but not that clear today. And here, Oh man, not a good sign. Puncture. All right, that was an unfortunate flat, but we should be good to go. Let's get back on the road. Thankfully, still some daylight left. I was thinking I was gonna have to cancel this video. Looks like we can finish. Oh, this part's really narrow. But yeah, that's one of the realities and dangers of bike commuting. You might have mechanicals along the way. Helps to be prepared. Thankfully, I had my flat kit. But yeah, it really helps to be prepared. Thankfully, I had my flat kit and was able to get going again. These are brand new tires in a new tube. I think it was caused by my rim tape. I noticed, oh, those flies, they just came out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, my rim tape is kind of really messed up from cyclocross season. I didn't have any new rim tape when I put the new tires on and I was planning to change it soon. Didn't get around it yet, so there's my karma. So definitely when I go into work tomorrow, picking up some new rim tape, gonna change that and fix that. So now here we are on the Yada River. All of those flies seem to be hanging out over here today. And this is the path I'm on for the majority of my commute. And at this time of the day, it's really interesting. The shadows just get really long. It's kind of funny. It's like I'm chasing myself home. Right now, there's a lot of birds. You can maybe hear them in the background. And there's also a lot of berries on the ground. So every day on my commute, there's been these people picking these, I believe they're called mulberries. There's some down here right now. These things, these trees are everywhere. People have just been out like crazy every morning picking these berries. And I picked up a few on my way home the other day for Tung Chan, my wife. She was pretty happy for the collection, but unfortunately there weren't too many good ones left in the trees by the time I got there. So again, this path is really convenient. Really grateful to have this path for the commute, but it is a little bit narrow, like you saw with that runner going by here. And sometimes the runners run on the opposite side with another cyclist coming from the other side. And it can be a little bit dangerous at times. But if you're not going too fast, it's relatively safe. There was a bike right back there on the side that someone ditched. A lot of people commented saying, like Japan's so clean, there's no garbage anywhere. And it's true for the most part, in comparison to other countries, it's really nice. But there are some things, if you know where to look, I'll try and point some of them out along the way. This is a nice new section, they just paved this. This used to be kind of all gravel and kind of a mess, but We've got some nice fresh pavement here, so this section's getting a bit faster. They also did some construction here, adding some support for, I guess, in case there's any flooding. Sometimes these areas aren't really designed very well, and they've just kind of been left there for a long time. And then there's a really bad flooding, and then it just breaks and it's really nasty. It's happened to some other areas in Japan recently. So maybe that's some preparation, so. 
It doesn't get like that. Sharp turn here. So yeah, the, the gravel bike, the cross bike, definitely the way to go on the commutes. I use my road bike occasionally. People were asking what bike I was using in the other videos. I was using my road bike uh, mainly because I usually do my training in the evening after work on certain days. And so that was one of my training days. I did film the video in the morning, did my training in the evening on my way home. Um, but generally I use this bike. This is Suikachan. And I love it. Just the extra comfort from the bigger tires. Can't go wrong. You might use a little bit more energy, but it's just way more comfortable. And if you're commuting every day, speed isn't always the most important. It's important to be comfortable, keep your body nice and healthy and happy. This bike actually used to be my cyclocross race bike. I raced cross on it the last two seasons, but it sort of turned into my commuter machine now. You probably saw when I was fixing the flat, there were some rusty sections and that's from all the cross races, all the, the winter riding, all the rainy rides. I don't always have time to clean my bike right when I get to work. That's one of the hardest things about bike commuting is the maintenance and the cleaning on a rainy ride when I get to work, change my clothes, dry off. I don't always have the time to clean my bike. And yeah, it's just gonna unfortunately have some parts rust or go bad. This section up here is another recent construction that they did. It used to be kind of dangerous. They had all these holes in these bricks but now they filled all the holes, so it's nice, smooth the whole way. It used to be kind of risky going through there. Luckily for most of my commute route, the path is mostly paved. There's a section up here that's not quite paved that we're gonna go through really soon. And if you continue past beyond where my work is, All right. <laughs> All right, guys. I think this is a sign that just today is not my day. Second flat of the day, and unfortunately, I don't have any other tubes or uh, patch kits to fix this. Looks like I'm gonna have to walk home. 10K to go. We're gonna have to cut today's video short. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you the full commute, but I'll try and show you guys in another video soon. Hopefully, we'll get my bike fixed up and as always, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time here on Tua Cruise and be sure to give this video a like and comment if you like these kinds of commute videos. See you next time.